For most of his life, Jackie Chan has been risking death for a living. As an actor and director, Jackie has redefined the nature of world action cinema. What sets Jackie apart from his rivals is his willingness to perform his own spectacular stunts. In this film, Jackie returns to the days of the period Kung Fu movies and shows how he pioneered his own brand of very special effects. We reveal the specialized training that he and his stunt team undergo to prepare themselves for the screen. Jackie returns to the locations of one of his greatest achievements, Police Story, and shows how he set a new standard in screen action. For the first time, we open the doors to the secret Jackie Chan stunt lab to examine the various tricks of this dangerous trade, and Jackie himself conducts a master class in film fight choreography. We follow Jackie onto the sets of his hit films, Who Am I? and Rush Hour, and discover how he and his team devise some of their most daring stunt sequences. If action, if danger, if courage have a name, then that name is Jackie Chan. This is Jackie Chan, My Stunts. Jackie began his career as just another stuntman working on the Hong Kong movie treadmill. At that time, the industry was devoted entirely to producing period martial arts movies. These were divided into kung fu and swordplay movies. In kung fu films, the characters engaged in unarmed combat. In swordplay movies, they often had supernatural powers and fought using a variety of bladed weapons. Here, Jackie and his stuntmen demonstrate a traditional martial arts fight sequence. First, Jackie comes up with a concept for the fight, then carefully stages each action and reaction. Though the combatants have to be skilled kung fu exponents, it's equally important that they possess the correct sense of timing so that they can synchronize their movements with one another. Pretty, right? From no knife until I get first knife, second knife, and third knife. At the end, I kick the guy out, back, boom. The most important is the pose. I design like a more art fighting, like a dancing. That's a much nicer. Even I kick somebody, there's no violence. The knife, I never cut somebody. If I create this scene, maybe I just after, boom. I go away means I don't want to fight anymore. I'm ready to win. I don't, have to, I don't have to kill you. I already get your knife, but I throw it away, give you, give you back. If you fight me again, I, I will steal your knife again. In this scene from The Young Master, Jackie and opponent Yun Biu show off the virtuoso physical skills they learned at a Chinese opera school. In Chinese opera, the performers execute onstage fight sequences in which they wield their weapons more like circus performers than martial artists. It is this sense of the theatrical that Jackie brought to the traditional kung fu movie genre. See? And I, I, I would use anything like very pretty, see, after fight, when I sit down, sit down. After kick, he go around. Because the, the, the timing is so quick, you don't mad, you cannot, you didn't know did I hit his toes or not. One more, slow motion. Come, look, that's when slow motion, I just hit him. Then he just do the reaction, the audience knows. Then I turn around. Give him a kick. Then maybe after kick, I sit down, the very nice position, and I let the audience, wow. And the funny thing is, in the modern day, of course, you use this kind of thing, yeah, yeah, you know, this kind of face, you, I want to kill somebody. But in the old day, you can tell, when we're fighting, uh, the, the camera move back a little bit. You, you can see the toes. Every, every position, look, the toes, you must have the nice toes. And, after fighting, bah, 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 no matter how you fight, bah, bah, boom, and e e even boom, those kind of position 
It's a very important. It's a more difficult than the, the modern day fight. Ah, 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 this kind of thing. When Jackie made his American debut in Battle Creek Brawl, he broke new ground by transposing the kind of action seen in the period kung fu films to a movie set in 1930s Chicago. At that time, Americans had no experience of this kind of on-screen combat. Jackie had to fly in two of his stuntmen to stage a scene in which his character is challenged by rival martial arts masters. Though limited by the fact that he could not control the camera speed as he does on a Hong Kong movie set, Jackie still kept some of his trademark style. That's a chair. Of course, when we're doing some action, we have to make the special chair. Usually the real chair, you cannot kick it. But I want to show the guy how powerful. When I use those things, nobody can see it. Then we just put a little bit, <clears throat> little bit powder. The action, when he kicks me, when he kicks me, I break it. All the things go to piece by piece. Now I show you the how, to, how to editing and how to do the fighting scene with the broken chair. Okay, make it as simple. And if the camera put in this side, he fight, kick, boom, bang. And I push, he kick, cut. Because when we're doing this one, and that moment is so fast, also it's a wide angle, and also with the background down, you cannot see it. The boom, you, can, you cannot see all the wire. As soon as he kick, cut, we move the camera behind him. And we do all over again. And then I show you the broken chair, how we do it. Of course, not this one. Uh, we do the broken one. See? Pretty, huh? And that's a trick. So that's how we make a movie, not like a I think in America, I believe right now they just do nothing. Boom, the guy kick, they can do it on the computer. Boom. But this, but very expensive, I know. But this is the cheap way we make our own movies. But anyway, looks good, right? Cheap but good. Jackie also gets good value for money out of a distinctly Chinese object that has both a practical use and an artistic aspect. A fan. And because Chinese fan, everybody knows looks very pretty. Some of, some of them, more than a million, because it's an antique. So when I catch the same fan, I look around, you know, I try to how many movements, you know, like those, like those. When you're fighting, you just put, boom, boom, and this kind of thing. And of course, it looks very easy, but it's not easy. And the most difficult thing is when I, Throw the fan and coming back for one shot. More than 120 tick. Those kind of scenes, when you see it in two minutes or one second, if, oh, Jackie, good. It's not good. You can do it. Except, do you have the patience or not? Come again. Okay, one more time, one more time, until you finish. Besides the fan, kung fu movies offer Jackie the chance to show off the skills needed to wield other classical Chinese kung fu weapons. And you have to know the tempo and the movement and every movement. And when we're making um, the movie, it's much careful with these kind of things. And these kind of things. And also, uh, wait, Achi. Okay. And also, knife. That's a Chinese knife. There's a lot of. Lot of right? Yes, the, the basic, the basic things. That's a, we call blood, cheating. We put in the hand like this. When the fighting scenes, you hold it because you cannot see it. It's ah, no, so fast. And when the guy, boom, when he hits, see the hand? When, ah, then you just put in the stomach. Either put in the camera or either Put in the wall, shows, shows all the blood, but there's uh, candy things. Hong Kong stage blood is a combination of food coloring to give it the necessary redness and cough syrup, which gives it texture. 
In this classic swordplay film, an anonymous stuntman dies a horrible death using his handheld blood bag. Another technique called for a stuntman to spray a stream of blood from his mouth. They action. See? See? That's a between low-class stuntman and high-class stuntman. See what I'm doing? Right here. But that's too violent. Sorry about that. Ooh. What Jackie's film fights may lack in blood and guts, they make up for in complexity. He is famous for choreographing hand-to-hand <laughs> -hand combat encounters in which he deals with multiple foes at the same time. See? When the old days, no matter how many people to fight me, okay, four people fight me, then there's one people fight with me. Bang, 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 bang. Then the three people behind just like this. Then after, boom, ah, damn, see? Then another one coming. Bang. Then another one coming. Bang. Bang. Why not four people come together to find me? I'd rather stay there, punch, kick, boom. See? At least the same time, they, they fight at the same time for one shot. Boom, bang, shot, boom. Then, and everybody have the yowling. Everybody yowling, then I know when are they coming. So like, uh, 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 see? When he, uh, because everybody yell in the same, uh, 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 I don't understand. So this why he will yell, in front of me, they yell the same thing. Ooh, ooh. But when, when he come in, ah, then I know, ah, it's the punch. So, ha, ha. Then, see, I'm, that means a lot of people fighting me, or he give me a punch. One, two, three. Ha, ha. Ooh. See, then, come. Ooh. See, this one come at the same time. Ooh. Boom, then I move the camera, then I duck. Because, why when I duck? Because the editing. Editing is one of the key elements of film fight choreography. Jackie's style relies on a keen sense of camera movement, razor-sharp editing, and the unique communication that exists between him and his stuntman. See? And it's becoming our own language. It's chow, chow. It's a go. Lie is come. If my, my own people, you know, give me, uh, the stick, Ciao. Ciao. and he can, he can give me very low and very short time. Ciao. That's my own people. If some other people, I'm, my face and also I'm scared. I'm really scared they, they hit me and be after fighting. Ciao. See? My reaction was like this, ooh, because that's the, the people I don't know. If I, the people I know, see, I, I don't care if, if they hit me as an accident. Where American movies restrict their flying characters to Superman and Peter Pan, in Hong Kong swordplay films, anyone who knows martial arts can fly. <laughs> that's the knuckle, how we do it. For us, you see, that's for us. You know how much it costs? Less $5 US. Huh? Oh, $2 US. I spend a lot of money to buy America product, USA product. When I bring it back, you know what they're doing? They still use the old things. I don't know why, but they've been doing like a 30, 40 years. When you say it, easy. When I give you those, you still don't know how to do it. If you don't know how to do it, it breaks right away. And sometimes more narrow than this. When we're doing those kinds, I have to make sure it's my own stunt guy, do, they do it, do, those kinds, not some other people. Up, a little bit. OK, try. So while we test this, we test the way and make sure everything's right. OK, going okay. down. Action! <laughs> huh? He's gone. 
See? How I going up? How can I jump like this? Cannot. So I have to make like a, okay. Just not strong enough, but I do it. Oops. But I try. So if somebody chase me, then I just come here and look. Make sure two sides. Let the audience know, wow. One look, two, then boom, and up. And I just straight up, straight up, straight up. Wow, make sure those, see? And at least I make these kind of things believable, then go up there. I like jumping. Up. Pa -pa -pum. Something is a trick. Something is ability. This is called ability. When staging a high fall stunt, Jackie and his team use cardboard boxes, which they refer to as apple boxes, to provide a safe landing. These are carefully piled up, and mattresses are placed on top of them. Then comes the human factor. Before you jump, there's three things you have to know. First, you have to brave. Second thing, you have to know how to land. If not, you can very easy to hit a knee in your mouth. That's always happened. Uh, the third thing, you have to trust your people who put those things down there. So I trust them. In America, they use an airbag. Uh, but we cannot afford this kind of expensive things. We still use the cotton box and with the matches. Been used like uh, more than 30 years. We use it again, again, again. After one jump, we pull it back. Then we, when you use it, we're coming back again. And right now it's the 90s, almost the 20th century. Strange. We still trust. Apple box. To prepare their bodies for the kind of punishment their profession demands, Jackie and his stunt team follow a tough physical training regimen. This includes basic body conditioning and the honing of their martial arts skills. For their lifestyle, this kind of discipline is a necessity. Training for us very important. As like uh, if you're the lawyer, uh, you have to train how to speaking. If you're the secretary, you have to learn how to type. If you're students, uh, you have to uh, study very hard. Like us, physical stuntmen. So us, we have to train every day, every day. Because like, if you're students, you have to study every day, every day, until the examination. Uh, you, you get a A grade, B grade. Like us, we're training, training one day, you don't know which one. I said, you, or either you, jump over, do this. That's, for us, assemination. Though the various falls and flips seen in the finished films may seem both spontaneous and painful, they are the result of countless hours of practice. Over the years, Jackie and his team have put together their own alphabet of reaction moves with which they construct each new fight scene. Training, of course, important, but Especially like us, we cannot be like a very big muscle. Uh, we have to be light, flexible. We have to train different kinds of things. We do have our own ABCD. Even some fall, we make it ourselves. We just, sometimes just ask the stomach, show me some fall, I don't like that fall. Give me something, give me something. And end up, okay, 360, 180. Uh, Violent four. We, we just make the, of course, we're talking about Chinese, okay? Now I show you basic things, A, B, C. This is called Ho Oh, 
秋冠，后秋冠。三百六。Jackie brought the Hong Kong martial arts action movie into the 20th century with Police Story, the first film in which his stunt team really showed what it could do. The film's success led to two hit sequels, with Jackie and the team exploring different areas of stunt work. Usually when you design an action scene, there's two ways. Either it's an easy one, or either it's a difficult one. Like Police Story Part 2, there's a guard in front of the door. How can I cross the street? In my mind, I think, yes. I think I should do some difficult things, like the guard standing in front of the door. I came from the second floor to jump to another bus, another truck, and jump over. I always can do the easy things. I just walk over, but I just don't want to do that. What I like to do is uh, different than some other movies. Uh, like when I'm on the bus, when I see something, like I see the sideboard, then ah, then I put the sideboard lower a little bit. The difficult thing is that you from the truck jump to the bus, if something wrong, you just flip over. There's nothing to protect you. You just do it. But of course, when I go through the window, not the window, the glasses, then I cut my hand. The skin, the skin peels, and then I see my boob. But it doesn't matter, I make it. I believe Everybody remember the police story part one, I was hanging on the bus. There's a car going on, and a car going by, and I raised my leg, and I did this kind of thing. And doing all, all kinds of stunts. I think I better coming up. See, that's a not the normal embarrass. That's a metal. See? That's a wood one. That's a wood embarrass, that's a metal embarrass. So of course you, you must have the strength. So hold on yourself. There's another stunt I'm gonna do, you know, before uh, before I chase the bus to stop. There's a sloop after running out. How can I fasten the bus? Because the bus going go straight down like a turn around around. So I have to round down the slope. There's a quite far away, and and that time I really don't know what. It's dangerous. What's the scare? I just want to finish the completely the movie, and I want to finish the whole day. 
and we're just on the location but I'm not gonna show you again with myself I show you but with the ball this is it's a really change a lot I remember when I you know filming here at that time really there's no house no buildings everything's empty and and all even the tree is about that high but now it's more higher more higher more higher and the, the dangerous thing is when I running down the slope I thought it's about that deep but when you more go like second one it's more deeper and all my boys is down there with all the maps you know they don't know where I'm going they just guess I know if I falling down I would like a nice stop just like a ball so, so this is why I want to show you look if something happened Oh, see, non-stop. But if it really happened, a me, it won't die. But definitely mess. The action continue as as I point the gun. The bus won't stop because uh, there's a bad guy up there. So I. Boom, one shot. Then the bus hit the brake. I want this stun guy go through the window, hit the car, and falling down. Then sec, there is a two more stun guy up there, and go through another two window. One stun guy hit here, another skin guy hit here, hit the hood. That's a totally, completely action. Then, something wrong. And you know what happened? Because the bus is not like a normal car in the old days, just stop. They have an air brake, like zoom. When the stun guy zoom, when they first break, the stun guy tried to go, but the, the car going back. It's like a zoom. So all the kind of lost the balance. I know something going on, but I still have to finish the whole shot. I just searching around, searching around, you know, until I see a car, I turn around, there are three people. It's not land or nothing. Just behind me, about two inch, right behind me. I didn't hear any, you know, the car sound, the hood sound, the hoop, and the top. Nothing. Just I hear something, boom, and. The finale of Police Story was shot here in a Hong Kong shopping mall. It saw Jackie and his stuntmen compete among themselves to perform the most dangerous stunts possible. Okay, I want a stunt guy do some stunt in here. So this why I punch the stunt guy, then he just go down and down and down. The bad guy goes, then I have to go to shortcut again. So from there to jump to the escalator. When I the shooting day comes on, then I stop the escalator, do do without moving. Then I jump at once, then once moving, and with all my boys to catch me. Listen, everybody knows that's a pretty strong, it's a metal. It hurts when you're falling down. It's a different pack, it's a pack with a metal pack. The metal is a, like, a, uh, like a ruler, it's 
all we put one by one, one by one. Then give them a kick. Then ask, why we not go this way and go this one? Because this one going down is more safer, and this one is more dangerous. So we decide going this one, and after he going down and bouncing, bow, 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 hurt a little bit, but it's a. Uh, I, I think it's a great stunt. The final stunt caused even Jackie himself to think twice. I'm pretty scared. So I, I standing there once, I, I, I was looked down. Nobody up there just by myself. I mean, thinking. Then I just, uh, Jackie, I can do it. Jackie, I can do it. Then suddenly I hear rolling. Huh? I said, what? Rolling? After I hear 12 camera, you know, with the high speed. Then I said, oh, I'm going to die. Then suddenly on the screen, on the on the screen, you can see I'm yelling. After I yell, ah! <laughs> but right now I'm standing here. I look back. I don't know how I do it, really. The finale of Jackie's film, Who Am I?, is set here in the Dutch city of Rotterdam. A major fight sequence is to be shot on the bare roof of a 27-story office building. Jackie and his team have to apply all their creativity to stage a lengthy combat scene in such an empty environment. While scouting the location, Jackie examines various ideas, only some of which will be included in the finished fight scene. The most obvious aspect of the location is its height. On most Hollywood films, planning for such a scene would take place in a production company office with elaborate storyboards being drawn up. On Jackie's films, the planning is done on the actual location with the storyboards being drawn inside the minds of Jackie and his team. Their location scouting is almost as dangerous as the actual filming. Together, Jackie and his stuntmen devise a sequence in which the combatants will do battle at the very edge of the roof as they do not have access to either green screen facilities or a ground level mock-up of the roof. This will add a very real element of suspense to the action. The team also try and make use of some of the permanent features of the rooftop. For example, the wind from a powerful ventilator system inspires Jackie to choreograph an exchange of blows right on top of it. This section of the fight will combine his trademarks of action and comedy. Jackie plans to have his opponent's tie be blown up and around by the wind. Jackie then seizes the man's tie to keep him in range for a rapid-fire series of punches. Seeing this, a second opponent takes off his own tie. powerful wind also gives Jackie a chance to strike an heroic pose. This kind of shot gives the audience a chance to catch their breath before the next round of action. The wind also powers this weathercock. Jackie, still looking for ways to use the existing environment for the fight, considers ways in which he can use this as a weapon against his attackers. However, this is one idea that doesn't make it into the finished film. Besides making use of the existing aspects of their locale, Jackie and his team introduce props that might logically be found in this environment. For instance, the fight makes use of some bags supposedly filled with cement powder. In fact, the cement is edible corn flour. It makes a strong visual impact as it flies off the performer's clothes and hair. <laughs> The flower has to be painstakingly brushed off after each take and just as carefully reapplied, which makes for a time-consuming process. <laughs> Having solved the problem of how to best use such an empty location, Jackie and his team turn their attention to choreographing the fight sequence itself. It will see Jackie take on two foes at the same time. 
This brings into focus one of the problems the team faces. Most martial arts experts are not trained in the kind of complicated film fighting choreography that is the specialty of Jackie and his team. Dutch performer Ron Smorenberg has impressive kicking skills, but no experience in shooting this kind of action scene. This means that Jackie has to choreograph the most spectacular fight possible while trying to ensure that he doesn't get kicked for real. Teaching Smorenberg the necessary sense of timing and distance to ensure a safe yet dynamic duel taxes even Jackie's patience. <laughs> Stop. Now, you just remember you think. You have to watch me. If you, if you come too close, see, I'm going this way. You have to find out. Ready, action. Stay where you are. Stay where you are. Don't chase me. Boom, boom. Then, boom. See, everybody looks good. Then, come in. One step. Boom, boom. See? Come here. Listen. Slowly, carefully watching. Action. Bang, bang. See? Bang, bang, bang. See? Air the distance. Bang. Shoot, 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 shoot. I'm not scared. And the rhythm, boom, 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 coming very nice. Action. Action. What? Action! 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 Okay, 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 okay. Though Smorenberg's ability to execute the required movements improves, he still proves unable to execute certain sequences with the correct rhythm. For one section of the fight, he is replaced by an Australian Jackie Chan stunt team member who performs with a kind of speed and timing that Jackie demands. The team apply some unconventional methods to execute some of the more complicated aspects of the scene. In one sequence, both Smorenberg and a stuntman play the same role in one shot. Smorenberg delivers an initial kick, then backs off to let a Jackie Chan stunt team member execute a close quarters combat sequence. Sometimes the team come up with choreography that is humanly impossible, so they come up with a non-human solution. Here, a stuntman delivers a series of kicks with the aid of a fake leg. <laughs> this kind of trick has risks of its own, as Jackie finds out. On one particularly energetic take, the shoe from the fake leg is sent flying off the rooftop into the river below. During the course of shooting this fight scene, Jackie's been kicked in his stomach, injured his leg, and damaged his knee. He smashed his shin against a metal rail and even sustained a painful injury after falling back onto something as simple as a plastic belt buckle. None of these injuries are apparent from the finished fight, which is evidence that Jackie and his team can still come up with something new and different. Okay, guys, 
Stand by, everyone. Stand by. And row sound. Row camera. And action. Action call. Action call. So many extravagant vehicle stunts have been performed in Hollywood movies, it takes real imagination to come up with something that hasn't been seen before. For Who Am I?, Jackie and his team come up with a new approach. In this film, cars will flip and spin just like they do. The vehicles needed to accomplish this were supplied thanks to Jackie's special relationship with the Japanese car giant Mitsubishi. Four identical brand new Mitsubishi sports cars were shipped to South Africa and Holland for Jackie to crash at will. The value of the cars involved didn't prevent the crew from subjecting them to some extreme wear and tear. For one scene, the Dutch car specialists spend three hours building a sophisticated ramp to flip a car onto its side. However, the impatient Jackie Chan stunt team decide to get the shot the old-fashioned way. A stunt driver has to generate enough speed to tip the car on cue while maintaining enough momentum to take it down the length of the alley. On the first take, the car doesn't reach a speed sufficient to tip it over. On the second, the car goes too fast and crashes, almost hitting one of the cameras. The third time, the car tips on cue, but then gets stuck halfway down the alley. Perhaps surprisingly, no one has been injured. Finally, the car races out on its side and the crew get the shot. What happens next is extra. To continue the action, the car is dragged out on a trolley to allow for a close-up shot showing one of the wheels spinning. Meanwhile, the bad guys decide to abandon their own vehicle and approach on foot. To escape capture, the driver of the car has to get it into the right position for it to right itself. This shot is accomplished with the aid of 20 crew members. As the villains arrive, the car spins round and round to keep them at bay. For this shot, the cameraman is suspended above the car on a wire. Then, a hood-mounted camera captures a close-up of Jackie and his companions inside the spinning vehicle. Finally, the crew manhandle the car into position to allow our heroes to make their getaway. The scene in which a BMW spins down to the ground like a Jackie Chan stuntman is accomplished in three stages. First, the car is hoisted on a crane and swung into position at the edge of the roof. A dummy is placed in the driving seat. Sandbags and silver balls are put into position on the specially constructed metal and glass framework below the car to enhance the impact of its descent. 
five cameras are set up to capture the stunt. Once the car is balanced on the edge of the seven-story parking lot, Jackie brings himself and the other actors into the action. It is this human factor that makes the car stunts in his films different from some of the spectacular vehicle stunts seen in many of the other action films from Hong Kong and Hollywood. Rather than just showing a series of car collisions, Jackie places himself and his fellow performers right at the center of the action. Once the dialogue has been shot, the crew make their final preparations to stage the fall itself. This particular car stunt depends on manpower more than horsepower. On the street below, the crew are watched by a crowd of curious onlookers, and a state-of-the-art camera is given primitive protection. The tension mounts. Everyone knows that given that they only have one BMW to wreck, this is a one-take deal. Welcome to Jackie Chan's Stunt Lab. This is one of my laboratory and also the training class. Uh, uh, Sometimes when we have a new stunt guy, then I, I would call my boys or some actress who want to fight, some actor, they don't know how to fight, they want to fight. So here's a good place for, for them to train it. And also sometimes when they're taking a shower or driving, I suddenly have some idea. I written down, then the next day I will call all my boys come here to training. Uh, we write down all ideas, so in the movie, there's a lot of different techniques, all come from here. And also we have a lot of small small things, small equipment here, later I will show you some other kind of a trick, uh, kind of the, my Jackie Chan style. style. Boys, let's get ready. Now Jackie and his team stage their first demonstration, showing how the same wires that once allowed kung fu fighters to fly are now used to enhance the power of a kick or punch. A thin cord of industrial strength steel wire is attached to a mesh harness worn by the actor or stuntman preparing to receive the blow. The on-screen effect may be spectacular, but the mechanics behind it remain basic. Pooh is not fast enough. We're, we don't have a machine like America and poof, we just use the manpower. Like this stunt, you have to use two stun guys stand on the ladder. When the action coming, they have to jump and also let go. Let the guy fly and drop down. If uh, they push too hard, the stun guy becoming a superman. They have to push the right timing. You see those two guys put in the tatami because it saved me landing. But of course, when the shooting line, there's no map. So the whole setup will be like this. That's the cold kick, see? Very simple things, the actor or actress, they don't have to do anything, just boom, gone. And usually when the filmmaker making a movie, use the wire, they use a big wire, big proof, flying around, you know, the people, the audience can tell, wow, oh, that's a wire. When I use the wire, it's a small technique. If I don't tell you, you don't even know. Uh, that's how I like to do it. The small things, I use the small things. Uh, i show you how. See? Even he, very good for, but sometimes for me, it's still not enough. A, a special, when I travel around in, in some other countries filming, I use a different people. But they are not everybody stuntmen. So what can I do? So I use the small trick. Uh, use the wire in the shoes. Bottom of the heel and the shoes. The whole thing will be like this. 
That's exactly the same, same shoes. Look, right? So we throw this one, he changed the one, the wire under the shoes. Okay. When he wear it, when he's standing there, the wire go on the floor, on top of the floor, nobody can tell. And here maybe we need three people or two people, it depends how fast that want. And so the wire will go on the floor like this. And also the pack, you, you have to know where you put the pack. You have to put the pack at certain point, one point, two point, three point, that's a wire. That's the pack inside. And it depends if you're lucky or not. If you're unlucky, you take off your shirt or some just just like an undershot. So you don't have a pack. If you had a shot pen, so you don't have a pack. So that's a bad luck. You have to get hurt just one time. Yeah, we'll show you again. Little bit trick. When he fall down, we'll touch the floor just a little bit. Uh, effect. See? That's what I mean. And much faster and much powerful. And of course, you have to know how to use, when you use. It's not like uh, I use this. No, it's when you use on the wrong time, wrong place, wrong timing, it's a terrible. You have to know how to use. And also we use a lot of different things. We use this kind of things and, and also the double leg. We use a four and side four and also all from the shoes. One of the trademarks of Jackie's style of screen fighting is that he and his stuntmen really hit each other. I really want to really contact, but on the body, we can put a pad on the stomach, on the back. But what happened to the face? It's a, this kind of shoes. It looks exactly the same. Sort of. So because when fighting, you really cannot tell. See? Okay. See? It touch, but doesn't hurt. Although Jackie specially designed these foam shoes, he often makes use of common household objects in an imaginative way. A towel can be used for self-defense. A hat can become a chance for him to show off his dexterity. Even the hat, the normal things, the normal people really can do it. Sometimes the hat too light, then I change to another one. Why? There's a lot of coins inside. There's a lot of, see, there's a coin. That depends sometimes, maybe too much. We get rid of one, then we do another one. Basic things to to it's here in the stunt lab that Jackie and his team devise new ways they can stage physical action sequences featuring such commonplace objects. Good examples of the finished work are the use of a coat rack in Police Story, and a bicycle in Project A. Jackie's films feature some very animated, inanimate objects flying across the screen. Sometimes they are the real thing, and sometimes not exactly what they appear to be. That's a good take. Ooh. Ah. Come on. Hurry up. Oh. 
Oh, see? That's a good shot. Sometimes, when we, over 2,000 two thousand times, when you cross the camera, then cut. Then we just make the stuntman standing here. Like that. One, two, three, boom. See? That's the most easy way. See? Those kind of things. If the real one, it's like this. See? It's not even hit in the face. See, my, my foot is hurt. So this one, we make one like those. You don't even know how to tell. Of course, not just like a tight shot. It's when you're moving, see? And also when the cover. And when we hit in the face, we just put that sound effect. Then it makes real. And also, in my movie, the action never stops. Jackie's films make frequent use of glass stunts. His determination to give his action scenes a foundation in reality can lead to him and his stuntmen bleeding for their art. Top. Top. See, the glasses doesn't blow. But how I want to blow, show you. As this is a sheet of genuine plate glass, it has to be specially prepared in order for it to shatter on cue. A metal screw on top of a coin is placed at each corner of the glass so that it rests slightly above the surface of the table. Okay, now we show you the broken one. When police story part one, uh, you can see I use a lot of Glasses, glasses, all the different glasses. And what kind of things I haven't used yet? So later on, of okay, course, I think about the bottle. Comedy things, you know, kick. He wants to take the bottle, I take it away. But in the alley thing, I want to, in the alley, somebody throw me a bottle. Then we, I, 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 I've I, been looking for location. In America, there's a lot of alley. Huge, very big, very big alley. Then if the people throw it at me, I can just duck away. So I build my own alley. We find the people, the creative, all the you know, graffiti, these kind of things. So this is why we have a small alley. They throw the bottle at me. But the funny thing is the real bottle doesn't hurt me. Fake bottle, more dangerous than the real bottle. It's not fake. See? Hurt. It's not, so this is why when, when we fake glasses, still dangerous. Perfect. If you think you're tough enough, join Jackie Chan's stunt team. Watch this. The Jackie Chan stunt team, the elite of their profession. Out of a thousand contenders, only eight are chosen. Today, there can only be one as they compete against each other to win the most coveted prize in the stunt community, the Golden Elbow Pad.
Besides his physical stunts, Jackie's films also contain action sequences featuring such hardware as cars, guns, and explosive devices. Jackie first became interested in gunplay after he made the transition from martial arts movies to modern day action films. The first project in which he really got to fire some heavy metal was The Protector. American cowboy, there's a lot of wow. But in the modern days, we cannot do those kind of things, you know, put in the, put in the pocket, because also the pocket is different already. So even uh, handing the gun and think about some trick, oh, boom, gun. Then, so give somebody like this, so somebody holding a gun. And also, if you really like those kind of gun, after you know the guns, then you have another trick in the guns, like, like who am I when uh, the, the, the bad guy, when they take the guns, so I just do something, then I, and I just get the whole piece off. The actor or actress, when they're fighting, it's like this. And the worst thing is a slow motion, you know? Then, then I, even myself, I look at my, my, on the screen, even myself, the first shot is like this, because everybody do it. That's a normal thing. But in a movie, that's not right. You have to do the da, 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 da. So how can I do that? When I'm filming before, rolling, bang, bang. Then I, I shoot it, dang, 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 dang. So the eyes always open. Because I want to really be a professional. But you know what, the dangerous thing is, after I know one more guns, then I know how terrible it's gun, how powerful it's gun. So this is why, um, don't think you're holding a gun is to be a hero. It's no, you get rid of a gun, you still be a hero. Gunplay was not the only new element found in Jackie's films after he began making contemporary cops and robbers actioners. Since the very early days of Hollywood, movie makers have delighted in offering more bang for your buck in the form of extravagant explosion sequences. Jackie's films often feature scenes in which it looks like their leading man is about to get flash fried. Though the pyrotechnic displays in his films are impressive, Jackie himself admits that in terms of sheer scale, he cannot compete with Hollywood blockbusters. To compensate for this, he has developed his own personal theory of the Big Bang. Explosion itself is boring. When I in the explosion, that's interesting. Don't believe everything you see. This is actually a sophisticated special effects shot, with Jackie reacting to pre-recorded footage added to a green screen background. The new technology being developed in Hollywood allows actors to perform their stunts in a safe yet spectacular fashion. By comparison, Jackie's own methods have usually been much simpler. He stages the biggest explosion possible, then runs away from it very fast when the cameras roll. For the finale of Police Story 2, Jackie devised the biggest pyrotechnic stunt ever staged for an Asian film, demolishing a specially constructed Hong Kong factory using tons of explosives. Given the risks involved, he has often been asked why, given the advances in special effects technology, he still feels the need to risk life and limb. When in America, the actor, you don't have to do that. You just stay in the blue background, and you run, 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 then explosion. But what I like to do is on the set, you really see the atmosphere. You know, the, 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 the energy, you know, really, really do it. Now we just do the test things. If they're in the movie, much bigger, much stronger, and much longer. I think what I want 
maybe later on, later on, I want the real set with the real explosion and the blue background behind um, with special effect computer, everything with my real action together. I think that's the, maybe the next, the, for the future, I'm going to do it. But right now, I still like to do the real things. As he plans each new film, Jackie is under constant pressure to come up with fresh ideas. For inspiration, he speed reads books and magazines from around the world, searching for intriguing visual concepts for future use. Uh, every day I watch, like, I watch a lot of newspaper, books, all kinds of things. Everything I like it, then I will put in my wall. That's my Jackie Chan's secret wall. You know, see though, this one already used Who Am I? This one already used uh, a nice guy. Uh, the car we already used City Hunter and all kinds of things I haven't, I haven't used, used yet. It's like uh, what, what things like, like the, the submarines, these kind of things, and those. Oh, it's my idea. Everything is my idea. Like the things I always carry in my wallet. That go with me more than, wow, I don't know how many years. See, already broken, broken. That's already used a Project A. That's a user Project A, they haven't used yet. When I, every time when I'm doing the new movies, then I would, I would open all the things to look, what things put in, and what, what things put in. So that's all my secret to show it to you. No more secret now. Right now, I want to introduce some like uh, modern fighting. Usually, when the when I design all the fighting scene, I let the art director come to the set, whatever you want to put. When I, then I come to the set. When I come to the set, I look. Can I use that? Can I use this? If I cannot get rid of them, something I can use, I just leave on the set because everything is like a weapon, like a car, even even this kind of ball, because you can make more comedy, more life. I still kicking and punch, but somebody chased me. As soon as this one turned, maybe I just give a, 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 a turning kick. It's makes like uh, interesting. Um, i show you how to do it. OK, we start. We start this one. Well, if on the set we have this kind of big wheel, then we'll design all the fighting. OK, big example. This guy, I push him, he's going back, and this guy coming with five, five, five. Then he push. Then I duck. As soon as that time, he give me a kick. Then, at the same time, I crash. Then I give him another kick on the face. Boom, reaction. Boom. Then I push the, the wheel back. That means he going down. Bam. And this guy maybe crash me, punch, boom, boom. This guy coming back. Boom. Then crap. Then Sometimes you're going back, or you're going backward. Like, look. I'm backward. And sometimes you can, the guy coming up, reaction, pow. So only one big wheel, you can use a lot of things. Like a supermarket truly. First, when I look at how many things I can use, I turn around, push, and this kind of things. Uh, good for the reaction, and good for I going in. But a lot of people say, why don't you use the big one? See, the big one, you go inside, plenty of room. When you design the action, you have to make a reasonable big wire have to go in because that's so tiny. Okay, bah, bah, bah. after fighting, this guy begin a push, boom, reaction, goes down. Go in, and this guy come in, give him a push, boom, see? Reaction. After reaction, and this guy give me a hit because I know where to go. So I have to go inside as soon as possible, then this guy push the chair, you stop, turn, boom, give him a kick, then turn around, boom, give him a reaction. And this guy, boom, kick, push, then whack, boom. This guy coming, boom, then we do a little bit of comedy. Like this, dong, the hand, boom, then big reaction. For the end shot, blah, 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 coming back, boom. See? Pow. Then 
Sit down. You chair, 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 chair. Boom, stop. Maybe somebody coming. Then run. Boom, when I push back. Then I grab this. Usually, the real fighting, of course. Bow. But doesn't look like nice. When I'm fighting, I always like a dancing, pretty. You crave. Boom. And this guy give me a punch. Then you see me stamp on the asteroid. Then give him a kick. Then, boom. Bow. Boom. It's a comedy. More guy coming, turn around, throw. Oh. See how pretty? I want pretty. I, I don't want fighting. I want the fighting is like a dancing. So, ah, and with the sound effect, then the guy coming. Then I, I try to let go. Then I, I see the light. Then put the light in his hand. See? When they get hurt, turn around, give him another boom in the nose. Then coming back, myself get hurt. Ow. Boom. I do something, then coming back. Then, boom. Give this guy a kick. I throw the chair again, you know, one punch and block the punch. Kick the stomach. Boom. Ah, as soon as he go, you pick up the ice cream, eat. Maybe like this. There's a, a bunch of egg. Boom, the egg drops. Take the tree. Pow. I put his face. Grab him again, put in the washing machine. Boom, you start the machine. The guy coming, you open the door. Boom, hit. Somebody coming. Flat. Another guy coming, then you jump in again. Turn around, sit down. Somebody give you a hit. Then you go to sleep, maybe give him a kick. Coming back here. Guys coming. Then you have to jump over. Kick. Hurt his leg. Maybe another guy coming. Go. Boom. Bamboo. That's a bamboo letter. A letter. A numunum? A numunum letter. Letter. Ah, oh, whatever. Letter, you understand. What, what letter? Metal letter. Metal, okay, metal. First, when you do the bamboo thing, you have to make sure polish because it, the things closing really hurts you. Why I'm doing this? Because those things really cut your hand. Experience for me. Before you do everything, you have to make sure it doesn't cut yourself. Those things is maybe just like uh, you go over, okay? And go goes back. A lot of people come, I can turn. And I can turn like this way. And coming back. Or maybe that's people chase you again. Then you're going back. And you try to very quick to coming down. And either go this side, either you just turn around and go this side. When somebody comes, boom. How many things you really can do it? Just do one shot. Cut all my hands. Remember, don't, don't do it at home. Just for you, I choreographed some action scene with my stunt boy. Let's take a look. Now let's take a look at every shot in slow motion. The first kick has no power, and so visually it doesn't make sense for the other man to be flying backwards. This one is no good because of the shirt obscuring the hit. This time, the kick missed altogether. This take has the same problem. The kick didn't connect. This stuntman has to fly back through the bamboo, but this take can't be used because he's just sliding down to the ground. The idea is for him to go through the bamboo, then fall down to the floor below. This is a good example of one of Jackie's basic approaches to action filmmaking. In this shot, the bamboo serves two purposes. It helps break the stuntman's fall and makes the fall itself seem more spectacular, with all the bamboo crashing down around him. A second camera is positioned at a low angle to enhance the visual impact of the stunt.
This take illustrates the importance of timing. The stuntman on the left does a beautiful flying kick, then his opponent flips upwards and bangs his head. This kind of incidental injury is all in a day's work for the Jackie Chan stunt team. Now we see how the camera angle helps sell technique. This kick is too far away. It obviously didn't connect. Again, the gap between the foot and the face is too obvious. On the last take, the angle is convincing and it looks like the kick really hit. Here the stuntman flips down and he's supposed to land on the front of the hood. On the first take, he lands too far to the center, which means he has to roll right across the hood, then drop to the ground. This doesn't have the same kind of speed and impact. On the second take, he does the flip and lands in the right position on the hood, but when he rolls down to the ground, he lands too close to the camera, so he's obscuring the final shot. This is the good take. As before, he does a perfect flip, and this time he hits the hood in exactly the right place. If you watch his expression, you can see that he's acting the whole time. It's very important that a stuntman also be able to act, to convince the audience that what they are seeing is real. For this next stunt, the stuntman is obviously moving very fast. When he hits a 90-degree angle above the stairs, he looks down to check his position. If he closes his eyes, he won't be able to control his fall. The stuntman must turn in the air so as to land on his back. Notice the powder coming up from the stairs. This is to increase the visual impact of his fall. Finally, he makes a safe landing. In this sequence, one stuntman fights several opponents. Though the techniques may be simple, they require a high degree of timing and coordination. Here, one of the stuntmen moves in on cue but misses the block, which puts him in the wrong position. Then, after this one technique is missed, the whole sequence breaks down. The next take starts well, with the fighters interacting with the right timing. Then, one of the fighters comes in from the right and he's positioned wrong and blocks the camera's view of the action. This stuntman swings at his opponent, but they're too close. This means that our hero can't execute his kick properly. He's unable to hit the bottle and has to kick a second time. This time, the sequence begins well, with the stuntman's movements coordinated and in sync. Here's the same scene from a different angle. This time, the stuntman swings in too fast, then everyone loses their rhythm. With this kind of sequence, even when everything goes well right until the very end, you can make one mistake and then get kicked in the face. It's an occupational hazard for a stuntman. Using glass in a fight scene adds an extra element to challenge the stuntman. Even with sugar glass, you still have to be careful not to get flying splinters of it in your eyes. Here's the same scene from a different angle. This time, the attacker brings the bottle in too high. It should be nearer the middle of the frame. Camera awareness is a very important attribute for a stuntman to develop. Even the best techniques are useless if the camera doesn't catch them. Here, one wrong move means that everything is positioned slightly out of frame. In this take, the bottle is still too high, but in the next one, it's perfect. The bottle comes in right in the center of the frame, and the kick comes in at the right angle to hit it. After breaking the bottle, the stuntman goes straight into the drop kick. The action continues, with this stuntman kicking as he falls to the floor. However, his attacker runs in too close and blocks the hero's head, obscuring his facial expressions. This time he lands, flips up, and the other stuntman runs into shot and delivers the kick right away. In this take, the stuntman throws his kick, but he misses, and now the attacker running in from out of shot doesn't grab him fast enough. This time the stuntman jumps up and executes a powerful kick to his opponent's stomach, but again the third man is coming in too late. This is a good take. The stuntman throws his kick, his opponent runs into frame, and everything happens consecutively with a kind of natural rhythm. 
The worst thing a stuntman can do is wait to get hit. It has to look natural. Here, this stuntman is waiting to get hit. Also, this wooden wheel is pushed into the shot too early. For the second time, the stuntman is waiting to be hit, and he gets kicked right in the groin. Even though the early part of the take isn't usable, notice that the wooden wheel comes in from left of frame with perfect timing. As the wheel comes at him, the stuntman turns and he reacts quite convincingly. Despite this, the scene has to be shot again. This is the good take. He kicks, drops, and then the wheel comes in. On the table, he splits his legs apart for added effect with no delays. In this outtake, the stuntman jumps back on cue, but he forgets to split his legs apart. Even though the breaking of the chair is just right, it's still a bad take. This sequence shows how important it is to have coordination between two stuntmen when they perform this kind of chasing scene. They have to match their movements second by second, constantly reacting to one another, or else the moves will look clumsy. Here, one stuntman grabs for the other, but he's already out of reach. If the two stuntmen fail to react to each other properly, anything can happen, including occasionally an unplanned flying shoe. In this take, they're completely out of sync. The stuntman doing the chasing is just grabbing at air, and there doesn't seem to be any real reason for the other man to run away from him. By the end, the whole sequence has run out of energy. Given the complexity of the scene, the unpredictable must be expected. Here, the stuntman vaults over well, but when he lands, he waits too long. The other stuntman runs into view, but then he really gets kicked. This is the good take. You can really feel the timing between them. The two stuntmen have the rhythm right, and they execute each technique to the full. The last kick looks like it really connects. The basic requirement of this shot is that the stuntman crash down through the table, through the glass, and onto the floor. In this outtake, we can tell that it's still going to hurt when he lands, but the table breaks too easily. This means that the audience won't feel the impact of the stuntman dropping through it, so the stunt doesn't really sell. This is the good take. He gets some good height on his jump back. He drops down in just the right place. The table shatters and everyone feels the pain, both the stuntman and the audience. This defines the Jackie Chan style. Now you see how I'm used to set. You don't need some special things and special effects. Just use your imagination. Use everything around you. Whatever you see, then can be doing the comedy and uh, fighting things. And what you see today is Jackie Chan style. One day I hope you can see your style, okay? In Rush Hour, Jackie plays a tough cop. This introductory scene sees him take down a gang of smugglers. It's the kind of sequence that usually needs a week to shoot, but Jackie, under pressure to finish the movie on time, only has enough budget for one night's filming. Everything has to move fast. You want one more? Yep. Uh, either you see I lock the lock the hand cloth, yeah, yeah. turn around, pick up the gun, hit cut, you use this shot. Okay. And <laughs> later on just I handcuff, turn around, down cut, then you use this shot. Right. See, see it's all good take. See? see? Good. 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 You want to do one more? Yes. More clean? Well, okay. 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 As soon as I do the kick cut, here, boom, turn around. Run, jump, cut. Next shot will be here. Ha, shot. Yeah. And this guy, ha, 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 ha. Oh, shot. Ha. This guy, roll over. And look, pick up the gun. Boom. Yeah. Uh, good. Fix it. Come on, Mom. Action.
The next night, the production rushes across to the studio mock-up of an American museum. Jackie's character tries to protect some Chinese artifacts from armed raiders, despite the fact that he doesn't have a gun. He has to find ways to make the confrontation convincing. Jackie's hand-to-hand -hand combat is interrupted by his efforts to keep the treasure safe. This approach is called character through action. The audience learns something about the personality of Jackie's character. He is a man with a serious respect for tradition. This enhances the audience's emotional involvement in the scene as they begin to care about both him and the antiques he's trying to protect. Jackie takes further punishment as he fights to keep a Tang Dynasty vase safe for the next generation. He alternates moments of comedy and drama to manipulate the audience's feelings so that the eventual outcome of the scene remains unpredictable. From the sets of a thousand classic Hong Kong martial arts movies to the locations of a multi-million dollar Hollywood production, Jackie Chan has practiced his extraordinary craft. In this film, we have examined many of the aspects of one of the world's most respected action filmmakers. We've shown how Jackie developed his unique style and offered some behind the scenes insights into how he turns his visions into reality. For the man himself though, Past glories are less important than the next challenge and the next generation. Now you see in a lot of different way I'm making a film. Not the, not the best way, not the only way, only my way, Jackie Chan way. And I just show you a little bit how we have a no money, low budget, and no blue background, no computer effect. And special effect and making a film and if you really want to be a filmmaker really want to be a good director good actor you should learn something from America director there's a many many great directors around the world and there's a lot of different ways making a film around the world and don't totally copy me you should copy a little bit me then more create yourself they're becoming your way and it's most important is not the best. You have to be yourself and more creative. Mm, thank you very much again. Hope you enjoyed the film. Hope to see you next time. Bye bye. Digital effects may be fun. One day I might use. But now you have to see the real thing. <laughs>